Rolf Rickrate here to talk to you about a new announcement from Come On, who you may know as Simon, but I believe they now wish to be known as Come On. Uh, they are releasing a brand new technology that they are calling a new evolution in board games. It is called Teburu. That's another word that I'm not sure how they want me to pronounce it. And it is an entire system made to play other board games using digital technology. So uh, you'll be seeing this trailer that they released that we're going to be playing underneath our discussion. Uh, you can see they have inserted electronic chips and sensors and pieces into what look like traditional game pieces, including the board, minis, uh, even the dice. Uh, and also it is compatible with an app. So uh, presumably each player playing whatever the game may be would have their phone in front of them that would feature their own character's information uh, and other details that you'll have access to. And it would all be reading what you're doing in the game. So if you roll the dice, the app would recognize what you rolled because it's all wirelessly connected, electronic, and it would tell you how enemies move. It would know every environment, every possible action that you're taking on the board. They even have technology so that when you move somewhere, a sound might play to simulate different types of of environments or monsters or enemies, uh, gunfire, anything that you might think of. It's all digitally connected. Of course, we have seen plenty of games that use apps uh, for their gameplay. This is the first time that I can think of that we've seen something like this, certainly from such a major company. They have announced that the first game that it's going to be compatible with is Zombicide Evolution Las Vegas. It's going to uh, be on Kickstarter next year in 2020. But uh, you can see in the video, they also show a couple shots of what looks like Cthulhu Death May Die and Project Elite, two other games they put out. Uh, so... It seems like it'll be compatible with maybe not every game that they make, but uh, at least uh, several of them. This is a very, very weird video. Will, what was your first reaction upon watching this trailer? Uh, I'm still not sure whether it'll catch on. What could be really annoying is, let's say they're like, oh, look at our gaming system. It only works with Simon games, and Fancy Flight makes their own, and you can do their games digitally. And like, I don't want to buy a whole other digital mat. So I'm curious how that's going to, if it does become big, it means everyone's going to want to do it. Could it be everyone can just use the one taboo they got, or do we need one for every different company? But as you said, the Cthulhu uh, Death May Die, I, I'm excited to see it for that because one, it would give a rival to Mansions of Madness and I think force them to up their game. Hmm. Maybe making interactions a bit more interesting. You could do things that if your specific character has a fear of insects, when they happen to walk into a room with that, it literally shows you're terrified because you see that. Mm -hmm. I think it could have some fun possibilities. I hope they use it to add more story to games because I think sometimes it's a little hard to add story just because you don't know what a player does. But because you have the digital components, you can really add some interesting directions, like Dead of Winter kind of style things without having the deck. So I'm mm -hmm. just hoping they really take advantage of it in that sense. Yeah, well, it's it's interesting because, I mean, I know that I, and I think you as well, generally am really a proponent of apps in board games. I think it can bring a lot to the game. It can really enhance them. I've enjoyed it in, as you said, Mansions of Madness, Dead of Winter, uh, First Martians is very app-heavy. XCOM was, I think, probably the first big one. Um, I think that when done right, it can be a great thing. I think a lot of people... Uh, traditional board gamers especially are kind of hesitant about that stuff and even more so I'm sure watching this are thinking this is the opposite of what I want uh, you know you're 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 kind of video gamifying board games uh, I mean do you is there a point where it's just excessive that you know the dice have technology in them like i mean are we gonna have to first of all are you gonna have to change the batteries on these things will the game system work in 10 years or are you gonna have to buy a new one how much is it gonna cost can you switch out the pieces uh, bit by bit or do you have to buy a whole new system that's a big right up front thing i mean you a, a come on game excuse me usually costs you know uh, with the big minis game they can definitely be in the range of 100 dollars or more 
is this is are you is this going to be on top of that? Are they going to have some kind of a deal? You know, right now, even if it's three games, for how many people is it worth it to pay whatever that price is? Which I've got to imagine is not cheap. Uh, just for those few games, it's there's a lot of things that they are asking consumers to kind of take a leap of faith on. I think that a lot of people probably will jump into it at first. Uh, because Zombicide Kickstarters always do really well. But the, my again, my fear is, like, we've seen some of these technology-based games where years later, if it doesn't take off, you're out of luck. It's not supported anymore. And, well, yeah, that's the two problems. Either A, it's not supported and it dies, or B, it becomes big, but instead of everyone just, okay, we'll just license out to Teburu to uh, add our games there, it becomes Fancy Flight's Digitable and <laughs> you know, just coming up with all these crazy things, which would be a, do you really want to buy this like five times over? It has the potential to be really awesome. I'm just pessimistic, I guess, for some reason. I, no, I don't blame you. I think on the one hand, it, you get a little more confidence from the fact that it's from a big name company that they will support it. But on the other hand, like you said, it would almost be better if it was some third party and that somehow it was usable with any game but even then then that is such a tall order to say like i the amount of time it must take for them to go in and develop the game and then make it work with this like is, how much time and how much more money does that well, take what i'm really hoping they do would be like let's say they showed a cthulhu death may die well it could be like i have the base game but there's an add-on it's the cthulhu teburu or there's the Rising Sun Tebru. So literally, it's not actually part of the core game. You just sort of buy that little digi- that expansion, which comes with whatever digital dice or bases you need. Yeah, but, th- but then is the problem from their perspective that why should we devote the extra resources to doing that if we're not sure everyone's going to want it? That they it might true. be more in their interest to force you to get it because they're like, look, we <laughs> it took us a lot of manpower to put this together. Uh, you know, I think that's part of the issue. Um, it's weird. I mean, it is very weird. And, and on top, beyond all of that, I mean, I think just on a basic level, I mean, is this something, is there a world, a future where you would want to play? Like, do you think, I think there are some people who might look at this and think, is this the future of board games? Would would every board game be like this, where it's no longer just analog? Some people are just, they don't want technology in their board games, you know? They don't want it at all, so... They're definitely cutting those out. And it just feels weird because you and I, as you said, are usually heavy proponents of technology in board games. But some reason this just, I don't know, worries me a little some reason. I think it's a lot very quickly. Uh, I think it's the expense. I mean, the thing is with most of these app-based games, uh, most people at this point have a smartphone and you just download the app. It's not an extra cost. So this is an entire physical system. And I'm also like, it's still a little confusing about it, what games does it work with? Do I store it in a separate box from those games? Like then I have to take it out each time. Like how much space does it take up? There's a lot of unknowns. I will say I applaud them for doing this by like, it's very ambitious. It's they're t- definitely taking a leap. And I do think that a lot of times for technology like this, you know, somebody's got to be the one to go out there and do the crazy thing. Uh, and I would love for it to be really successful. Uh, we, we will find out, hopefully, because they're going to have a demo available of this system at Gen Con this year. Yeah, uh, I'm sure we'll try and see if we can uh, make our way there. God knows, I bet the line's just going to be huge. I do, or maybe nobody will want to play. <laughs> I, it's, it's, I feel like because it's I feel like there'll even be a portion there just because it's Zombicide, like not to try out the Tiburu. Yeah, that's probably true. Also, I just, I just love in the press release their wording where they say "roll the wireless dice anywhere." <laughs> the, the idea that it's like it's a special thing to promote that their dice are wireless, <laughs> like that would be something you're worried about with dice. Uh, I'm actually. Thinking a little, and I just remembered, I have a feeling the dice won't need to be charged or anything. You remember you brought that up? Yeah. I assume they're going to be, I just, like, uh, you know, Amiibo cards or figures? Like, they, those don't need a battery. Sure. You know, it's just, they just, I just don't know how you make sure it scans properly. Yeah. Because imagine if the dice, get, especially if it's not a six-side die, you know, once you get the bigger dice sides where they have smaller faces, 
just imagine it scans a four instead of a six, and that was what you needed in difference of beats. And you're like, oh, come on. Right. Also, with uh, you don't roll amiibos. <laughs> you know? That's true, Th- too. This is a small object that you, literally its sole purpose is to be thrown against a hard surface. <laughs> 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 like, how do you proof that so it doesn't break down constantly? I mean... That's this uh, an engineering feat that they're going to have to work out for themselves. <laughs> so uh, we will be seeing this and talking more about it uh, later this year at Gen Con, but it's going to be coming to Kickstarter in 2020. So let us know in the comments, are you into Taburu? What do you think that name means? What games would you want to see use this? What are some ways you think this could be used in a cool way? Let us know in that comment section. But until then, I'm Will. I'm Jonathan. And this has been Roll for Crit. Get an inspiration token by supporting us on Patreon and liking and subscribing to this channel. If you support us on Patreon, you'll get access to our audio expansion podcast. It's so good. 